Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Heavy Mounts, we're to the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Shelter. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Alright. Even the ancients deemed it too important to grant access here to just anyone. The door to this room opens only for the holders of a specific type of key card. Luckily, I have one in my possession. One of the dogs found it and brought it to me around the time we were desperately looking for a solution to the mana overload problem. The card unlocked one of the towers on top of shelter for us. It was riddled with many rooms with screens and complicated heavy machinery. Once we got in, we got we put all of its systems online right away and left them running while we investigated every nook and cranny in the newfound rooms. To our joy, the machinery here sucked up large quantities of mana. For a long time, we were oblivious to where all of that mana was going, but we were still happy. When we found out that it was powering one of shelter's turrets once I fired it by accident and destroyed a large chunk of a nearby mountain. The dogs howled in joy and found that hilarious, but I was terrified. It was only by a miracle that no dog was hurt that day, and the forever changed forever changed landscape remains and the forever changed landscape reminds me of that. That was the perfect solution we were looking for, though. I just had to find a way to fire it safely in the future. Next time I tried firing it high up, which caused a peculiar effect. The dogs told me that once it reached a certain altitude, the energy burst over the sky and exploded into something inexplicably beautiful. I've never seen the explosion myself. It takes me a long time to reach and leave this room, and each shot creates a huge instability in the shelter system that I have to monitor. However, the dogs loved the explosion so much that they started asking me when the next one was planned. They started celebrating the skies ablaze, and it became a part of their culture. I wish I could see that. The turret uses extremely heavy shells to absorb mana. At first, it took, took us roughly half a year to fully charge one shell. However, shelter's population keeps growing. That shortens the time between each skies ablaze. We're in the third quarter of the current year, and it's already our second shell. That's a lot of work to set up everything each time, but it has to be done, and it keeps everyone happy. One day we may run out of shells to load the turret with, but the situation is still a blessing. It gives us one. It gives us more time to investigate shelter and look for new solutions. Everyone works hard to keep our home free and open. Now is the time to do my part. I have to make sure that everything is ready for tonight. Luke? Are you listening, Luke? Huh? I open my eyes and find myself back in my tavern. The dark sky shines with so, with so many colorful stars. It contrasts so beautiful, so beautifully with pure white snow. Uh, Burry? Wasn't I? It's about to shoot! Don't take your eyes off the sky! Huh? Who's handling the turret? I should be there and... Don't worry about that. Max has everything under control. He wants you to take a break for once. Don't you want to be here with me? Barry puts his hand on mine and holds it gently. It's soft and warm, just like I remember. Like the time Barry saved me those years ago. Of course I do. I sit and look at the sky with him gently, with him quietly. We don't need to exchange words, just being with him makes me feel comfortable. I lean and rest my head against his shoulder. He, in turn, gives my, hand, gives my hand a gentle squeeze. Right now there isn't any other place I'd rather be. Thank you for being here. Ever since the day we first met, you always stood by my side and supported me. I couldn't do any of this without you. I could feel Burry's big fluffy tail brushing my butt as it wagged. I love that he's usually so stoic, but he isn't afraid to show joy. Burry, what's going to happen now? It has been so peaceful for so long. Each of you have your own new lives now. You needed me to handle shelter, but if Max can use the relics, what's my purpose here now? A bright spark on the horizon shoots up into the sky. I'm finally going to witness my first skies ablaze. However, the shoulder I rest my head on grows tense. The hand holding mine trembles. Luke, you're right. We kept you only because we couldn't use the relics. So now I don't think we need you anymore. Huh? His hand grips my grips mine harder. It hurts. We finally don't need you, human. <gasps> Shit! I fell asleep. I found myself back in the control room, sitting in one of those heavy chairs in front of the displays, heavily heaving frantically. I've been feeling so tired recently that I must have dozed off at one point. I take a few deep breaths and compose myself. Wow, that wasn't pleasant. Too much work and stress and isolation doesn't do well to my mind. I have to snap out of it. 
Still, despite the ending, I kind of wish I could have slept a little longer. For as long as it lasted, it felt nice. But of course, it was only a dream. Couldn't be outside the night. I'm going to spend skies ablaze here, monitoring and handling everything, like every time. Not with the dogs. But that's okay. This is something that simply has to be done. And I'm the only one who can do it. There's no way, there's no way anyone else could. The dogs always help me load the turret with fresh shells, but beside manual labor, there isn't much they can help me with. They can't read any of the displays, so instead I made them promise to have fun in my place. It gets lonely here, sure, but I'm getting used to that. That's just how we work together. Each of us has a role in Skies Ablaze. The dogs have fun with the other dogs, and I sit here alone. We don't need the human. We can figure it out on our own. Sure wish you could, don't you? A lone wolf and a human. Two outsiders. An outsider. I don't want to hurt anyone, anyone anymore. I, I love you all. What about the human? You like him too? No, I hate the human. But why? I haven't done anything to you. Why am I even thinking about Teak now? He's a stupid asshole. He just hasn't he just hasn't got to know me yet. If only he did. Nobody else thinks of me as bad as he does. Our friends appreciate what I do for us. They treat me as one of their own kin. All of them. Then how about we ask someone who isn't a canine? Oh, an outsider's opinion. Why not? That's a great idea. Hey, human! Human, come here for a moment. An outsider. Do you really think that way of me? That can't be true. We've been through so much together. You couldn't have forgotten. At the end, you're a human, not a dog. Our standards don't apply to you. You do you, I say. Are we really that different? No, I don't think we are. Those who matter, treat me like a part of the pack. Just, just like I feel like, just like, just like I feel I'm one of them. My guess is that humans are simply solitary creatures. No, I'm not. Don't you see that I work so hard to let Shelter's pack grow? I don't want to be outside of it. I want to be a part of that pack like everyone else. I want to have fun with you tonight. I want to see the skies and flames and watch the stars shed their dust. I don't want to sit here alone. I want to laugh and celebrate with my friends. I... I... I want to take part in Skies Ablaze. This is a special day for our home and community, and I can't be a part of that. I'm bound to this room simply because I'm the only human around. That's not fair. I feel like we're drifting apart. I'm always occupied with the tavern work or shelter's maintenance. The dogs are always busy with the other dogs. If I could... If only the turret could shoot on its own, I... Could it? Could I make it do that? Could I automate the process just like the way the time bomb worked? I'm pretty sure I could. I recall some options that would allow me to set up everything that I need here for the turret. That would be risky. Shooting it causes a lot of instability and shelter. But part of my work here during the night is monitoring everything and adjusting whatever is necessary to keep shelter stable. I always judge it to be something that requires my active attention. If something were to go wrong, we could have another blackout. But then again, this is not our first skies ablaze. I think I know what to expect. If I set up countermeasures for everything, there's a possibility that it could work and stabilize without me. I could take part in skies ablaze with my friends. Oh, so does the red mean... I think the red means, yeah, that we haven't done. Okay, so... One second, y'all. Oh, yeah. No. I'm not gonna put everyone at risk just because I want a party. I'm neither that stupid nor selfish. Just suck it up. I chose this life and this responsibility. I have to deal with it like an adult. I finished tweaking the parameters on the screens and checked for any leakage in the cables, but everything is as good as it can be. Satisfied and reassured, I leave the control tower and walk back toward the tavern. I think I'll pass by the Guardian again and grab the piss bucket. I only fill it with cleaning stuff at the tavern. I'm glad I didn't follow through on my reckless idea. Moments of weakness like those happen sometimes, but it's proof of maturity to deal with them sensibly. Seeing all the dogs happy and worked up about tonight fills me with renewed determination. This is all I need to be happy. Each of us has to make little sacrifices for the good of shelter. As long as I do my part, then surely the dogs will appreciate- Huh? 
You! You! Nope. Uh... What'll happen? What'll happen? Yeah, <laughs> okay. I continue walking towards the Guardian. The mutt runs away as soon as I make the first step. I'm too tired to even care anymore. I grab the piss bucket and go back to the tavern. I'll clean it later on my way to the night shift at the turret controls. For now, back to work. The sky's ablaze passed like every other night in the past. I heard that it was beautiful and the dogs had a lot of fun. Most of them celebrated outside in the open. Rune and Max were the heart of the party like usual. Deacon Thistle had the most fun ever. Everyone was already making plans for the next one. It really was the best skies ablaze to date. After that, nothing changed for a long time. Months and years flew by. I kept fulfilling my duty like I was supposed to, and over time I even stopped feeling sad about those things at all. Everything was fine. In the past, I used to dream about going on the excavation trips with the dogs, but I finally realized that I would... I finally realized that that would never happen. There are some things that I, only I could do. Some things that only they were fit for. Eventually we ran out of shells to load the turret with, and we didn't find an alternative solution to the Mon Overload problem. We had no choice but to say goodbye to most of our friends. That was when Teak and Alan left. Thistle had passed away due to old age and previous months, so at least so he didn't have to witness that. I still had Burry, Max, and Rune around, and but Shelter was never the same after that. It wasn't as exciting as it used to be. I know that we all did everything we could, but I still have those regretful thoughts sometimes. Did I not do enough for shelter after all? The end? Oh, shit. Okay. Stagnation. Okay. The Barkest Corner. Alright. You idiot! How can you be so spineless? What? I put my own needs aside and chose to fulfill my duty for the sake of the dogs. That's the opposite of spineless. No, you are just acting like a cuck. And for what? To keep the mechanisms running? Is that really what's the most important in shelter to you? What about your friends? What do you take them for? Does the food analogy really fly over your head? Food analogy, I got it. No, that one was blatantly clear. A food analogy? Really? If you understand, then go back and make the better choice. Stop being so pathetic. Be selfish, for everyone's sake. Okay. At one point during the early morning scene, a mysterious figure will appear behind one of the pillars. Click it. If you can fi can't find it, look for a screen containing a bit of script shown below. I know, I know, that's the Breath of Colchis. Okay. Hmm. Alrighty. Bark. Locations, items to do. Um. Bark. Alright, y'all, I'm actually gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!